very good morning friends i hope you're all safe and healthy so in step number 5 related to the hedge accounting series of discussion we had a discussion on the accounting for a fair value hedge and in today's video i am going to discuss the accounting of a cash flow hedge so just to recall that there were a total of five step procedure in terms of hedge accounting and we are dealing with the step number 5 that is once you've identified in step 4 what kind of hedge accounting would be applicable so now we're looking at that if you decide it's a case of a cash flow hedge then in that particular case how the accounting entries will be done let's look at in detail the step number 5 relating to the cash flow hedge is sunday 23rd may ko thoda study se break lijiye और अपने आप को अनवाइंड कीजिए क्योंकि आ रहा है आपके पास कॉफी विद सी यानी कि खूब सारे चार्टेड अकाउंटेंट्स जिनमें से कुछ चार्टेड अकाउंटेंट्स एजुकेटर्स हैं कुछ इन्फ्लुएंसर्स हैं और कुछ रैंक होल्डर्स रह चुके हैं और ट्वेंटी थर्ड मे को एक इवेंट ये होने जा रहा है कॉफी विद सी जिसका लिंक आपको डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में मिलेगा और इस दिन ट्वेंटी थर्ड को यानी कि संडे को आपके साथ बहुत सारे स्पीकर्स जुड़ेंगे मॉर्निंग 10 बजे से लेके 6:45 तक जिनके अंदर सी ए सी एस अंशुल अग्रवाल सी ए अमित पोपली सी ए रुचा शारदा सी ए सी एस शांतनु गुप्ता सी ए कुशाल लोधा और सी ए हार्दिक मिश्रा ये सब लोग आपके साथ जुड़ेंगे तो संडे को अपने आप को फ्री रखिए और कॉफी विद सी एस लीजिए now uh, when you look at the accounting for a cash flow hedge first of all whatever is the changes as far as the amount of uh, changes you can say in the fair value of the hedged item or the hedging instrument is concerned that is taken in a specific reserve which is called a cfhr a cash flow hedge reserve now this cfhr is nothing but it's a part of the other comprehensive income or you can say that i'm going to show this particular reserve first of all it will be taken in the other comprehensive income from there it gets reflected in the statement of changes in equity now when you go to show this in the statement of changes in equity then the heading within the statement of changes in equity is going to be what we call a cash flow hedge reserve now there are two things what we need to decide number 1 what is the amount which is to be taken to the cash flow hedge reserve in this 109 very clearly makes a mention that as far as the amount which is transferred to the cash flow hedge reserve is concerned it is supposed to be the lower of the two number 1 we need to first of all calculate what is the cumulative gain or loss on the hedging instrument from the inception of the hedge and then we need to consider what is the cumulative change in the fair value of the hedged item now one particular catch which you need to be careful on when you look at the cumulative gain loss relating to the hedging instrument is concerned we don't do any discounting but when you consider the cumulative change in the fair value of the hedged item we need to consider the present value now how would you do that of course we can see in the practical question though in the example which i'm going to take with you i have ignored the concept of present value for the purpose of convenience but there has been a question which has been introduced in the rtp may 21 where the concept of present value has been applied in terms of calculating the amount which is taken to the cash flow hedge reserve but remember when you create a cash flow hedge reserve you need to first of all calculate the fair value changes relating to the you can say hedging instrument and the fair value changes relating to the hedged item but when you take the hedged item you need to take the present value so we will take the lower of the two in terms of absolute figures so that is the amount which is to be taken to cash flow hedge reserve now this cash flow hedge reserve is something which we need to find out that there would now be a fair value gain or loss on the hedging instrument now we need to identify that there are two portions which is we can say the effective portion of the hedge and one is called the ineffective portion of the hedge now you would say how would i identify that what is the effective or the ineffective portion of the hedge 
Well, I, if you remember the earlier discussions which we did, you know, we said that if you are planning to hedge, let's say, 1000, you know, shares in an equity instrument, then you should also correspondingly enter into the same quantum of uh, shares as far as, you know, a hedging instrument is concerned. Because we know that the fair value changes of the hedging instrument as well as the hedged item move in an opposite direction. So to get an appropriate, uh, you can say, a set of in terms of fair value, because on one hand, you'll have a fair value gain and the other hand, you'll have a fair value loss. So it is important that the quantum of hedged item and the quantum of the hedging instrument is almost equal. So that would decide indirectly, you know, what is the effective portion of the hedge and what is the ineffective portion. The effective portion of the hedge is taken in terms of other comprehensive income. And as far as the ineffective portion is concerned, it is going to be taken in the profit and loss account. I know once I'm going to take a practical illustration, this will become a little more clear. So this is as far as the amount of cash flow hedge reserve and the amount of this to be taken to the OCI and in the profit and loss account. Now, the question rises, what do we do with this cash flow hedge reserve? Now, there is a couple of information, you know, which is given in India's 109. And I think without taking any illustration, it would be a little, you know, difficult to elaborate all these concepts. But of course, you know, considering that I'm just introducing the concept of hedge accounting, because there is no dearth in terms of going into, you know, depth of things. I have taken an illustration only out of the first box of this particular chart. So I'm going to concentrate only on that particular bit right now. It says if a hedged forecast transaction subsequently results in a recognition of a non-financial asset or liability or a hedge forecast transaction for a non-financial asset or liability becomes a firm commitment for which hedge accounting is applied, fair value hedge accounting is applied. I think let's take a very simple example. You know, without this, I think this is going to be sounding very, very technical indeed. So let me, I think, take a simple example and explain you the nitty gritties related to a cash flow hedge. On 1st April 21, an Indian company has a firm commitment to purchase 10 lakh kgs of chemical at the rate of four pounds per kg from a UK company on 30 June. So it's a firm commitment, but it's an unrecognized asset as of now. So in this particular case, I can say, if you ask me what is a hedged item, I would say a firm commitment is the hedged item in this example. The Indian company designates the firm commitment as a hedged item by entering into a forward contract. So the company entered into a forward contract that is supposed to be the hedging instrument, which is being used to hedge the risk related to the hedged item that is the commitment to purchase inventory. And then it says the Indian company designates this instrument on 1st April for 100 rupees a pound on 30th June. The initial value of the forward contract is zero. You know, whenever you enter into a forward contract or a futures contract, the net fair value on squaring off on the date when you enter into the contract is always nil. So there will be no entries which will be done on the 1st of April 21. The spot rate on 30th June is given its 105 per pound. So we given the rate on 1st April 21 is supposed to be 100 rupees a pound and the spot rate on 30th June is supposed to be 105 rupees per pound. So we're looking at accounting, you know, within a period of one quarter, that is April to 30th June. Now let's have a look at how the accounting is done. This will give us a little more idea. Now, as we've just identified that there are, you know, two things, the step number one, where you would identify what is the hedged item. The firm commitment to purchase the inventory is supposed to be hedged item. That is step number one. And the step number two is looking at a hedging instrument. The company entered into a forward contract and that is supposed to be the hedging instrument. The step number three is to identify that whether it is a qualifying hedge. So assuming that all the conditions of a qualifying hedge relationship is met, we're assuming that the step number three parameters are met. 
Then in terms, terms of step number four, we are looking at that what kind of hedge accounting you know, we want to apply. And in this particular case, we're considering a cash flow hedge because the company is worried in terms of the outflow which will take place to purchase this inventory at a future date. Since they've entered into a commitment to purchase the inventory at a future date, it is worried about the cash outflows which will take place at a later date. So it wants to apply the concept of a cash flow hedge. So we're focusing on the step number five. How would the accounting in terms of a cash flow hedge take place? Now, in this particular case, what do we need to do? First of all, is we need to get the fair value changes in terms of hedged item where we need to apply the concept of present value money. And we also need the fair value changes in terms of the hedging instrument as well. So at the first instance, what we have done, we've simply worked out the fair value changes relating to the hedged item as well as the hedging instrument. Now, in this particular case, if you look at the firm commitment, the pound was 100 rupees. A pound was 100 rupees on 1st April and it changed to 105. So naturally, there is a loss in terms of the cash outflow which will take place for the firm commitment. So from 100 rupees a pound to 105 a pound, there is a fair value change of 5 rupees a pound and the company is planning to purchase 10 lakh kgs at the rate of 4 rupees a pound. So we can say the loss relating to the hedged item is supposed to be 40 lakh pounds, 10 lakh kgs into 4 pounds. So 40 lakh pounds into the fair value change is 5 rupees a pound. So 200 lakhs is supposed to be you can say the fair value loss in terms of hedge item in terms of Indian rupee. And similarly, if you look at the hedging instrument, you can say naturally the amount of loss relating to the hedged item is supposed to be the amount of gain relating to the hedging instrument. So I have not taken any present value concept as of now. We've just taken the fair value change. Now, since the period involved is a period of three months, you would say, sir, the concept of time value money would not apply, but that's not true. We would apply the concept of present value money even for a period of three months, but I have not given you any discounting rate for the purpose of calculations. So we are simply ignoring the concept of time value money just for the purpose of convenience. Now, just reiterate, you know, the theoretical inputs which I gave you. The first thing is we need to decide that what is the amount to be taken in the cash flow hedge reserve, CFHR. And we said we need to consider the cumulative gain or loss on the hedging instrument. We just now saw that the fair value changes relating to the hedging instrument is supposed to be 200 lakhs. And if you consider the cumulative changes in the hedged item, ignoring the time value of money, ignoring the present value is also 200 lakhs. So for convenience, I'm ignoring the concept of present value related to the hedged item. Since both the figures are equal, so the amount to be transferred to the cash flow hedge reserve turns out to be a total of 200 lakhs itself. Now we need to identify that what is the effective portion out of this 200 lakhs because the effective portion is going to be taken in the other comprehensive income and the ineffective portion is going to be taken in terms of p &L. Now since you can see very well in this particular case that the fair value loss in terms of the hedged item and the fair value gain in terms of the hedging instrument is of an equal amount, you can say it's a 100% hedge ratio. The fair value changes are flowing in an opposite direction and the amount of fair value gain or loss relating to the hedged item and the hedging instrument is equal. So it implies that it's a perfect hedge it is supposed to be a hedge ratio with 100%. So since it is an effective hedge, the entire amount of 200 lakhs relating to the cash flow hedge reserve is going to be transferred to the other comprehensive income. I think this would now be making a little more sense. Now let's see the accounting entries which are going to be done in this particular case. Well, on the 1st of April, the Initial net fair value of the derivative contract is nil, so there would be no entry. And of course, we don't need to pass any entries relating to the firm commitment. So we look at entries which are going to be done on the 30th of June. And the first entry, what we need to do is we need to recognize the amount of cash flow hedge reserve, which is going to be taken in the other comprehensive income. So we have taken the 200 lakh rupees as a derivative financial asset. And that amount has been credited to the other comprehensive income by giving a nomenclature to be reflected in the statement of changes in equity that is called the cash flow hedge reserve. 
and then correspondingly the company would also pass an entry and the entry in this particular case is going to be we record the inventory and that inventory is recorded on the rate prevailing on the 30th June itself which is supposed to be at the rate of 105 rupees a pound. So in this particular case 40 lakh rupees rather 40 lakh pounds 10 lakh pounds into 4 pound 40 lakh pounds converted at the spot rate which is 105 so we record the inventory at the rate of 4200 lakhs but in this particular case the amount of payment which you're going to make is based on your forward contract so the outflow is already fixed at the rate of 100 rupees a pound so the entry relating to the cash is taken at the 100 rate a pound itself so the remaining amount is going to be taken to the derivative financial asset so in this particular case, after passing the entry, creating a derivative financial asset and recording the inventory, the derivative financial asset gets completely knocked off. And then we need to, you know, if you remember, we were discussing that if you've got a firm commitment, the amount of cash flow hedge reserve is going to be adjusted to the carrying amount of that unrecognized asset or liability. In this particular case, the unrecognized asset is supposed to be inventory so whatever is the amount in the cash flow hedge reserve that is going to be adjusted in the inventory so the 200 lakhs the entry becomes cash flow hedge reserve to inventory so at the end of the day the inventory is got recorded at a net figure of 4000 the outflow in terms of cash has also been recorded to the extent of 4000 itself so if you look at the net impact of all these entries which have been done since you're already committed and you've entered into a forward contract, now if you look at the net effect, you can see that the net effect is that the inventory is getting recorded to the extent of 100 pounds, 100 rupees a pound, which is 4,000 lakhs, and the outflow is also getting recorded on the same lines. So with the help of hedge accounting, what is done, the entire outflow is got, you know, fixed at the rate of 100 rupees a pound, and the inventory is also getting recorded at the same rate. So spot rate is indirectly becoming irrelevant. Though in between we are passing an entry, recording the inventory at a spot rate, but then at the same time, when the cash flow hedge reserve is getting adjusted against the carrying amount of the unrecognized asset inventory in this case, automatically the net figure works out at 4,000 lakhs itself. So this is in very simplified manner the concept of cash flow hedge reserve. I know there is lot much you know which can be elaborated on this issue but don't worry there's always a scope in terms of taking some more inputs to you at a later date. Now we are just left with one simple little portion related to hedge accounting and that is a net investment in foreign operation for which I'm going to make my last video in the series on hedge accounting. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.